Hello humans, so here we are. We're finally gonna start talking about this guy. The uh, L2 ER9. I guess this, you would call this a partial group set. Uh, shifters, derailers, brakes, battery. <laughs> so I know there's a lot of controversy about this group set with a bunch of other YouTubers like a Luke from Trace Fellow, GC Performance, um, China Cycling. Those guys have been having issues here and there uh, with this group set, but um, I, don't know, I just decided to roll the dice anyways. The price was right, and I've waited long enough to hopefully give uh, L2 enough time to iron out the kinks and such. Um, and so far, it's been it's been pretty good, despite a few uh, a few things here and there. <laughs> but anyways, let's go through the group set. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is L2's first electronic group set. This is the ER9 version as opposed to the more premium ERX version. I went with the ER9 because I got it for $450 off AliExpress off 80 Designer Store, I think is the store I got it off from. I had like a discount code, I think, and something, and I can't remember what it was, but added it total shipped was 450 and it took 11 days to get here I think somewhere about there a little under two weeks and I've been on it for about 550 miles at this point and it's yeah okay 550 miles isn't a lot but I feel like it's enough to sort of give you an idea of performance and how it feels and reliability and yeah, it's, it, it's been hard to get the miles out because it's cold now, it's winter in, in Northern Virginia. But anyways, rundown. It's the electronic group set. It's a partial wireless group set, kind of like what Shimano and Campy's running. So that means the uh, shifters are wireless, but the derailers are still connected to the battery, which is in the suit tube, kind of like what a Shimano is. The cool thing about this, which I really like, is that you can actually choose how many speeds you want, like 10, 11, 12, so it's backwards compatible if you do decide to upgrade and go for more speeds. That is such a cool option to have, and I wish the bigger brands would actually do this, because it doesn't cost them anything, but you just update the software. But anyways, this is the L2 ER9. Now, the difference between the ERX, the more premium version, the ERR9, as far as I know, is only the, car the, the brake levers. The ERX has carbon brake levers, and this has probably aluminum. <laughs> and instead of the gold decals and graphics, it's silver. Um, surprisingly though, the weight, the claimed weight of the ERX was really, really close to these uh, non-carbon blade bladed ones on the, uh, the ER9, and it was a lot lighter than the claimed ER9 weight. So if you guys do decide to try and like go for this L2 electronic group set, just get the ER, ER9, um, yeah. If you guys have, are seeing this video, I'm assuming you've seen all the other L2 uh, review videos at this point. So I'm gonna skip all the setup stuff and only talk about my experiences with the thing. So, 550 miles at this point. Do I like it? Yeah, I actually really, really do. Um, Quality-wise, it's actually really, really good. The hoods, the rubber and hoods is very, very cool. The ergonomics in your hand when you first take them out of the box is actually very, very cool. Quirks though, there are things that need to be refined, so first thing, which you will figure out really, really quickly the moment you try and set your bike up, is the location of the bolt for uh, <laughs> for the clamp onto the bar. It is almost like an old school Shimano STI thing where it's literally in the middle of the brifter. So get a really, really long hex wrench and possibly one of those like rounded ones at the top so you can, pop, you can tighten it at an angle. Uh, it's a pain in the ass to reach, so adjusting it was, yeah. It's, 
it's not ideal. I mean, it works, and once you're good with it, it's cool, but that's not ideal. Ergonomics-wise, with the shifters while we're here, there is a bit of a hot spot, at least for me, um, for a few reasons. One, I'm not sure if it's because of my handlebar shape, or it's the angle in which the clamps to the shifters are put into the shifters. There is almost always a little bit of a dip in the handlebar. And I kind of like mitigated that by putting, by cutting off pieces of, of bar tape and just like patting it under the, the shifter hood until I got the shape I needed. So that kind of like fixed it for me. But yeah, that kind of created this little angle. Uh, I really like how the shifters are actually small and compact. So that's really, really cool. But because it's small and short reach, and there was that bit of a divot in there, your hand, or at least my hand, wanted to sort of like get pushed into the front of the shifter. And that also like hit a little bit of a, a, a hot spot on the shifter. And this one, I think it's, it's from where the brake hose attaches into the shifter. Um, so yeah, that wasn't too comfortable, but I kind of just cut up pieces of handlebar tape and padded up certain places where I needed. And that seemed to have solved the issue. So there's like little, little refinement stuff like that, that uh, ho hopefully will be addressed in the next um, version of this. <laughs> Other things, there's been one ride. I mean, it's winter, it's been cold. And it, there was one ride which I went out and it was kind of cold, um, and I was kind of wondering why my rear derailleur, every time I pushed up the shift to an easier gear button, it would just keep shifting up the cog, even though I just clicked it once. And it's only happened once, but what happened was the button kind of got like stuck in. Uh, I'm not sure if the cold kind of um, made plastic expand or whatever rubber gasket expand or shrink or, or whatnot but it got stuck in and it would stay there until like I unstuck it with my finger um, it's only happened once so far and I somehow can't seem to recreate that problem so maybe uh yeah not an issue <laughs> so there was that happening for me so I'm, I, I think I do have a pretty uh, a much later updated version because I know, I think GC Performance posted about his battery case having leaf springs and I actually have the coil on, so I have an, uh, a newer version of it. So I think hopefully all the watering and rest stuff has been uh, solved because I know Luke and Tracefell had issues with that. And I haven't had any issues yet. Um, wood, wood. <laughs> Uh, I have not taken it out on like a crazy wet ride. I haven't stuck in some wet ones, but it's been working fine in terms of that regard. Everything's shifting um, really, really well. Oh, the grub screw thing for the uh, brake lever adjustment. Um, yes, I screwed it in way too much at one point to try and bring uh, the lever reach a lot closer to the bar, and it did go all the way into the bar. It did not fall into the back of the lever though. Like I think one of the YouTubers had that issue. Mine didn't do that. But it definitely like came on, on thread a little bit and you can like just thread it back in. Um, but it does not stop. But I guess it solved that issue too. So this is probably a newer version where you don't have to take the lever apart to like fish out the grub screw. Um, but so there's that. That's probably what you all want to hear in terms of like reliability and all that stuff um because at this point you guys have seen all these other review videos already so i'm just giving you guys all the things that needs to be refined off the bat now that said things i really really do like these brakes are amazing they're a bit on the porky heavier side especially with those heat shrink things on the brake pads that probably adds to weight. Yeah, I know, I count grams, I'm a weight me, but so they're a little bit porky. Um, I paired them up with uh, these race, these cheap Racework 
rotors, 160, 140, because they were next day shipping and I wanted to get the bike together to go ride. And I haven't bothered to replace them, but they were really, really, really good. I'm a one finger brake guy coming from mountain bikes and stuff. And it's, it's very, very nice because of how strong they are. Like, I just, you know, I can relax a lot more. I can really be off the brakes and trust that I will stop. So that's been really, really solid. Shifting is very, very cool. I've, I've always been running mechanical on, on my drop bar setups. And this is the first time I'm running electronics and because the levers don't move, um, <laughs> I can stay, it doesn't change the ergonomics uh, and my hand positions and stuff. So I'm still in a pretty mechanically strong position to muscle the bike and whatnot. Um, so I really, really like the small limited motion kind of stuff. So I can shift in a corner. I can do some really last minute stuff and it's been fine. Shifting is perfectly crisp every single time. Even though I'm running like a, like a cheaper ZTTO 12 speed uh, cassette and just a canty 12 speed chain um, in the rear, you know, it's been, shifting's been crisp and you can index it for every single gear and that's been really, really cool. And that's saying something because I'm running things out of spec. As you can see, I am running GRX cranks with the two and a half mil offset for the chain line. I actually shimmed my uh, chain rings by two mil to help with the chain line a little bit. And the shifting's been very, 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 very good. The front shifting, oh my God, I have never had as much reliable front shifting uh, as I've had with this electronic front derailleur. It's really nice. Anytime you need it, it's there, which is very, very, very cool. That said though, because it doesn't take much to just push a button to shift a gear, sometimes accidental shifts happen or sometimes you don't know if you actually like hit a button not, or not, especially if you're wearing really, really thick gloves as now I sort of am because we're in the middle of winter. Hopefully for future revisions of the group set, hopefully they're gonna make the buttons a little more tactile or maybe even put a little vibration function in there like how Apple does it with their laptops when you, you know, push a button and it vibrates to like let you feel that like, oh there it is i have had accidental shifts especially in the front um it took a while to get used to actually where the buttons were i think my first ride there were a few times i tried swinging the brake lever and it was kind of dumb but there was one where uh, i was on a descent and then i think i was like bunny hopping some stuff some potholes and whatnot and i might have pressed uh, the front derailleur shift thing by accident and I actually dropped the chain on the outside somehow. I, I don't really know what happened, but um, yeah, so it would be nice if the buttons were, uh, you could feel whether you got it or not. Um, Cause yeah, it'd be nice to, to have a more def definitive like click and you know, um, cause with thick gloves, sometimes you just don't know and you can't feel. That's it though, and it's really, really cool on those ultra endurance rides and stuff. You don't, you can't push a lever, uh, so a button is nice. But hopefully they'll get that sorted out for the next few revisions. Like I said, maybe a more tactile button um, or a vibration function. Um, and at the same time, fix that stuck button thing, which I had in that one ride. Battery life. Uh, battery life's been pretty good, even with these cold temperatures. Uh, I charge them maybe once every two weeks and I ride quite a lot every time I go out. It's at least like, I don't know, five, six hours and in the cold and battery life's been pretty good. Runs two coin batteries. I think these are 2032s, those in the shifters. And then these like double A battery things in the seat post and it's been pretty solid. I just used packing foam and just stuffed it up my seat post and it works just fine. Other really, really cool things about this is uh, this act this group set actually talks to my, uh, my, my computer unit. So this is the IGS 630 and it's kind of cool that I can see what gear I'm in. And <laughs> 
It really helps because once again, sometimes if it's cold and I'm wearing really, really thick gloves, I don't know if I've shifted or not. Um, so it's kind of cool just to see it. That said, there is a bit of a delay every time you shift. I think it's like a second or something. It clicks and then a second passes and then it tells the, the GPS unit. Um, but yeah, there it is. That's uh, that's that's my experience with the L2 ER9 so far. Um, am I happy with it? Yeah, I would say I'm, I'm pretty happy with it, man. Uh, how reliable this thing is? Well, I this is mile 550. I will probably post another update at mile 1000 or 2000 or something. Um, especially, hopefully, uh, winter's going to be short and I can put on the miles. So don't forget to click the subscribe, click for something else, click for something else. And if you guys have any questions whatsoever, um, just, you know, drop, drop me a comment and I will try and answer any of your questions as best as I can. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.